Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Master Coach Carrie Marshall, and it's time to go after those goals. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall. Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. I am Carrie Marshall, and today I am here with one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Tracy Lyman. Tracy, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Now, introduce yourself to everybody, and then I'll add all of the bits and pieces that you miss out on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you know anything about this relationship, that's exactly what Carrie does. She and I have been friends for a really long time. We've also partnered in on some work together. She um, helped me to create one of my signature courses. And I am known for having a lot of ideas and a lot of concepts, and I'm able to innovate inside of my work and in, inside of my industry. And then Carrie takes all of that beautiful creation and innovation and edits it down for me. So hence why you will definitely be adding in those little details. But my name is Tracy Lyman. I am a mom of four. I would say that's my greatest accomplishment is being married and having a mom, uh, having kids, right. And, um, that they're alive (laughs) and, and they're really highly accomplished kids. That's the other thing Mm -hmm. that, that I want to say about her kids are her kids are very high achieving kids, which is really fun to be able to see them really go after their goals and dreams. So yeah, they are. We'll probably talk about them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I am, I've been in the health and wellness space for, since I was 19, I've always had an interest in, connecting with people. I've always had a gift of, I I didn't think it was a gift, but I always had a gift of people telling me really deep things about themselves very quickly. So I'm able to relate and connect with people. Um, And then again, I thought that was probably not a a strong thing because I was like, why is everybody telling me everything? Um, But it is, it's actually a passion of mine is being able to connect with people deeply. So being in the health and wellness space for what's now 25 years without telling you my age. Um, I created a passion and a career around that 10 years in the massage industry and then went through some changes and some challenges. We might talk about those losing mm-hmm. everything and then having to start your life over. Um, I actually started a network marketing business and became a top leader in that business. It's, it's a doTERRA business. And, um, through that, I deepened my passion even more for the health and wellness. And now I'm also continuing to work in the network marketing space and I've added what is called energy work and energy coaching. And so what people would probably say is, well, what do you really do? I am a holistic practitioner and I work with people on not only their wellness and their physical health, um, but also their financial health. So I combine those two together. Well, and the great part, like you said about our relationship is that we both have hired each other. Mm -hmm. So I have also hired you as my coach in the past. And really, as I was building my business, that was one of the key elements that I had was you in my corner, helping me with that wellness, but also wealth integration, which was so key. So I want to take it way back to when we first met. Yeah. Um, our, <laughs> our husbands have been friends since junior high, I think, mm-hmm. or high school. So they have this group of, of guys that have all stayed together really close. And then as people, you know, as, as they got married, then these friendships within the women started to be created. And I remember meeting you, you guys were living in Vegas. You were a massage therapist at the Bellagio Mm -hmm. um, and basically running that, that department. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I met Tracy, I just remember thinking, wow, like this is one of the most glamorous, amazing women I have ever met. So you mentioned though, that you went from being in that space to needing a change. So tell me a little bit about that time of your life and like what prompted you to make a change when you were essentially at the very top of your game, as far as the massage massage industry. Yeah, I actually, um, I'll even take it a little bit further is when I was 19, I was kind of a little rebellious. And so I was looking at the ways to kind of do my thing. Um, 
and also kind of figure out life on my terms. My dad had some really great ideas and I, you know, I just, college wasn't really right for me, but I've always been really kinesthetic. I've always been a, someone who can learn through touching. And so my dad actually encouraged me. He said, why don't you, why don't you check out massage school? And so he knew a chiropractor that owned a massage school in Vegas. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to check this out. And he also had invested in Aveda sanctuary spas. So I actually went and received what was called like a Vichy shower and I got the Vichy shower and I got the massage after. And I was like, if I can make money doing this, like I felt so good. So epic getting off the table. I was like, I'm in like, this is how, this is how I want to make money. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to make people feel exactly how I felt. Right. And so I went to massage school and I, at the time had actually gotten a job at Bellagio in VIP services. So that's where you're checking in and checking out and being a concierge for the high rollers, for the celebrities. And so I spent the first six months of that career, um, or Appalachio in VIP services while I was going to school. So I'd work during the day three to 11, and then I would, um, go to school. And I would go to school kind of in the day and just kind of had to shift things around. Um, but at that time too, I had a really awesome manager and she was like, Hey, why don't you apply to this salon, the spa go up? And I'm like, I haven't even graduated massage school yet. And you know, why would they take me? This is a top, I mean, Bellagio was the, at the time we just opened it. It was 1998 mm -hmm. and it was the best hotel on the strip. So I just was a little like, I'm not sure. Tried out anyway, got hired still had a week and a half go to graduate school. And then once I graduated, I shifted up into, into massage from there. Bellagio is really incredible. I got so much training. Um, they put us through different techniques and trainings. If we wanted to add things onto the menu, we had to get trained. So I feel like most of my real high level of training came from being in that job. And I'm so like grateful for that manager to say, Hey, just go try. It doesn't matter about your expertise. It doesn't matter or experience like the years, right. um, because she really believed in me. So I got a lot of really great training because of that. And I really, really loved what I do. And I think also being in VIP services, I knew how to handle the high end clients. I knew how to be really professional. Um, and so that's kind of where like everything started. And then the opportunity came up for me to um, go back to school and become an esthetician. And so I really look at that, that, that place in time as a huge stepping stone for even where I am now mm -hmm. and always understanding that every next level, even in business, like when we transitioned required me to skill up or learn a different skill or, you know, use the foundation of what I had and then build upon it for that next season. Well, and that's so important that I think so many people miss is that you need to up level the skill set, but then you also need to get the mentor, right? Mm -hmm. That mentor that can either teach you the skill or hold the belief for you. Like you mentioned, like mm -hmm. somebody saying like, Hey, have you ever thought about this? Because I do think that those mentors or those people in your life kind of do see those blind spots that maybe you don't see for yourself of like, wow, this is somebody that's really capable. She'd be great for this. But like you mentioned for you, you were like, I'm still not even graduated. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you don't hire, not in the, and that's actually intimidating because most of the people in the slot, the spa, like once I got in there, they'd been working for the, um, the Bellagio or different hotels for 20 years. There was massage therapists that had already worked 15 years in the industry. So it was really intimidating. Mm -hmm. And what I did there was it was just really fortunate. We had a great um, director who allowed us to work on each other, allowed us to kind of use the spa after hours. And um, we is there an after hours at the Bellagio? <laughs> There's an after hours. And eventually there was not an after hours. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think there's an after hours, really. <laughs> yeah. But for us, like what was great was, um, again, here, if we want to add something onto the spa, who wants to learn this? Because then that technique, you're going to be able to give that service. So they brought that in. And so that was extra schooling I didn't have to pay for. But then the second thing is being around so many talented people, what I did is because going back to where I'm kinesthetic, I was like, I really need to learn to up-level my skills. So I offered to trade with people. 
And luckily I had a really great friend. His name is Bob. We traded like every other week and he taught me even more intricate ways of approaching the body and getting more specific in how I could release tension or um, release the muscles in a a different way than I wasn't even taught in school. Mm -hmm. So that actually part is also really important too, is when you're in a career and you have access to people who have a lot more experience than you. One of the, I mean, they could have said no, they could have been like, I don't want this young person touching me or massaging me. She doesn't know anything. Um, but I have a way of connecting with people and creating relationships that, um, really help me to be able to ask for help. And that's the key right there is mm-hmm. asking, asking for help. You know, both you and Curtis, my husband have that in common. Like you guys will ask for anything. Mm-hmm. And Steve, your husband and I are always like, oh yeah, we, we get amazing things. We get upgrades. We get all the things because mm-hmm. Tracy and Curtis are always willing to ask for whatever they want. Right. So tell me a little bit about the timeline, because I know that you were doing this before you were married mm-hmm. and then you get married to Steve and are you still working at the Bellagio? What, I was. What was I, that transition? That transition, he, he was first starting his business out. And I think he was a little at the time. I remember him being like, oh my gosh, he had this really great business and it started going really well. And then all of a sudden it was like he was making $500, you know, a month. Um, and he was like, "How, you know, the, for him being newly married, um, that was quite interesting. But for me, I... I mean, my career was a six figure career. I was already making 120,000 a year. I had shifted at the time. I was now as an esthetician, they rehired me as an esthetician, the, the Bellagio expanded. And so for a couple of years, we, I continued to work. So it was, it was the glory days. I call it because I'm like, man, the two days of work to, you know, people would be really shocked at, at the the six figure came from working two to three days of work. They were 10 hour days. So they were nine treatments a day, but I never took time off on the weekend. So I, I just hustled during the weekend and then I would have my time off during the week. And while he was growing his business and then eventually what happened was things shifted and his business started to really take off. And this is where we were thinking about having kids. And I've always knew and had the impression and was given the counsel that I would, um, be my, um, a role as a mother would be really important for me. And the way that I nurture and care for my children was going to be a very specific role for me. Um, did not mean that I wouldn't work, but being in the home with them, I knew. And so his business was doing well. So I just quit. It was like 10 years and I seem to have 10 year cycles, 10 year cycles with things which we can talk about, but I just quit. I was like, okay, it's time. And it was funny right after I quit, I found out I was pregnant with this, my second baby, not scheduled, not planned. And so it just, it made perfect sense. So his business took off and grew and I was able to be um, home with the kids. And you know, that lasted for us. We have an incredible life in Vegas. We had credible business. We were doing extremely well. And Steve was in business with friends as well. So that's the other part of this is not only growing a business, but growing a business that was very successful and being able to share that success with a really tight knit group of friends was amazing to be able to watch. And I'm sure to be able to live that of having your best friends Mm -hmm. also hit such a successful level in that business. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were fortunate and and also too, (laughs) we all got married. And we were fortunate to come into great friendships where there was a lot of love and respect. And then also a business being built. Right. And so that lasted um, a while. And then we went through a major shift where um, that shift for us was uh, overnight. Our business was completely shut down. So let's kind of give some context to that, because I do think that that is something that a lot of people who are successful, sometimes we miss this part of it. Mm -hmm. And so like you mentioned, it wasn't, uh, oh, the business had a little bit of a failure or mm-hmm. we struggled a little bit. It was literally from one day to the next day, everything, everything changed, yeah. everything changed. So yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So being in, um, we grew our business very quick, very fast and being in the type of industry, we're in the coaching industry. So being in the coaching industry, um, And I think around that time, um, some decisions of buying businesses um, that weren't actually maybe the right business partners. And actually it's something 
that we are going to talk about, mm-hmm. but I, I want to bring that up is I, uh, it's actually resource integrity, making decisions. This is something that I coach a lot on now in coaching with my clients, but the resource integrity is when your alignment with your resources, it means that you're making choices that support and sustain your resources or you're, and when you're out of alignment, it can mean you're overspending or misusing your resources. Yeah. And the one thing that we, I kind of saw from the outside of all of this, you know, are so three of our friends are building a business together. It is booming. Mm-hmm. They're having a ton of success and it's like people are coming out of the word woodwork to work with your husbands. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants a piece of this business, them, their time, their energy, their investment, like they, everybody wanted something from mm-hmm. them. It sounds, it seemed like, mm-hmm. and that also right there is our, we, with our coaching now and Carrie, you do this too, is with your clients is when you're trying to make an aligned action, like you, you have a lot of opportunity in business and you're, and, and it's great when you have a lot of opportunity, but, um, being the type of people that we are, my husband and I, and also you, we naturally attract a lot of opportunities. It's important to then identify and to be very clear about what opportunity or people you're supposed to partner with. So we partnered with some people that it, wasn't the right partnership and that ended up actually costing us big time in our in our business. So that business when when Carrie's talking about is it's literally like the net, like in one day I have this big paperwork coming to my house, this blue paperwork, and it's like you're being served and your business is shut down. So and your bank accounts are frozen. Our bank accounts are personal frozen. accounts are frozen. Yes. There's no access to any money. Um, and how many kids do you have at the time? At that time, we had two kids and I was pregnant with my third. Okay. And so just to kind of give some more context to that, mm-hmm. it's you, but then it's also a major support system that you have in Vegas, Mm -hmm. all of you, all of us. Yeah. It's our whole group, right? It's our group that we're all building businesses, business together and having babies and, you know, spending a lot of time. So it's your big support group. And all of a sudden it's all everybody's under. it's like, I want to say like everybody's under attack, right? Like everybody's shut down in this. Everybody's pregnant in this. All three of us there, there was three owners and uh, there was more than three owners, but the tight group of us, there was three. We all had, um, the time I'm trying to think, yep, all three, all we were three all of you were third pregnant. babies. Yep. We were all pregnant with three, with our third baby. Mm-hmm. So this happens and there's a complete shutdown and there's this whole life altering. And this is actually where it's like, it's different than walking away from something and choosing something is not for you anymore than like, you know, and again, not knowing what everybody's belief here is, but it's like, you know, basically overnight, it's like, Hey, it, and, and again, I can liken this when we talk about being in aligned with people and the right people that are on your path. It's like what I understand now, with all the work that I've done and the coaching that I've done, I'm like, oh, well, if you didn't see that you weren't in alignment and you didn't see that these partnerships weren't great partnerships, it doesn't mean the business wasn't a great business. But along the way, there's people that came in and and opportunities that came in that you aligned yourself with that were out of alignment. And now it's like, let's get you back in alignment. We're going to take all this away, <laughs> wipe it clean, because you're not paying attention that you made some bad decisions along the way, or you partnered in and things aren't going as smoothly, or maybe you're trusting people that you shouldn't. And it's like, well, if you didn't notice this, I'm going to show you, God comes in and shows you, hey, and does that make sense what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And it was like a seven figure lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? So I know from, you know, being a friend, all of you had bought dream oh, yeah. houses, mm-hmm. all dream of houses, you, wonderful cars, wonderful calls, cars, luxury cars, yeah, um, luxury vacations, lots of support. Mm-hmm. And then I want you all like, who's ever listening to this. I want you to just imagine now, um, opening up your wallet and what you have in your wallet is now what you have. Yeah. That is the only resource that's available. Yeah. Well, and actually I do want to talk about this cause we were talking about like, so your people that you coach, they are building businesses. So they're going to be looking at, at these things like partnering with people. Um, maybe their business is just themselves and they're never supposed to partner with others. Um, but maybe their business actually requires them to partner with other people. And so being in strategic alignment with that person, just know at any time in life, things can change and people can change. And especially when you grow and there's a lot of money involved, um, there's a lot of resources, 
things can get tricky. And I think this is where people get sometimes upset in life. They're like, okay, well, what went wrong? Or all of a sudden this person no longer wants to be in the business or all, all, all of a sudden my clients aren't like my right clients. And again, that's because what can happen is there can be a shift in a change that that person isn't supposed to be there anymore. Right. And so I think people get stuck on that where there, there's a difference in between like making a bad decision of partnering with the wrong person and then knowing when the, the relationship has expired inside of your business. Right. And then the second one is the resources. And yes. that's what you're talking about is like the resources is, are we making decisions of using our resources to grow our business, um, in integrity? And I'm not saying that we were out of integrity, but our business model was not a model that, um, it's a model that grew really quick and fast and it's not actually a model. It's not the model that, that, that the FTC really liked. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not, a, and a lot of people do what we do now. So in the coaching space, but it was like, no, we don't like this model. We don't like, you know, so it's, there are some decisions where you're partnered with the wrong people and somewhere you're like, Hey, we're just growing. And it's just, it's out of our control. Right. right. Well, and like you mentioned, it's like knowing when the relationship is over, which yeah. is why contracts, things like that mm -hmm. are always so good. I talk so much with my clients about checkpoints of, you know, looking at those relationships, looking at where you're investing your time and money mm -hmm. and being able to really decide what that looks like. So you lose everything. And what do you do going from losing from being a seven figure you know, multimillionaire to now being pregnant mm -hmm. and having to do it all over again and build. Yeah, that was really tough. So fortunately, I'm in the nesting stage at this point. <laughs> so I'm packing up my dream home in the energy of like nesting that should have probably been going to like building a nursery or maybe preparing for this baby. And instead I'm preparing for like the biggest move of my life. And what's really cool around that time, I want to go back because I want to say this one thing. We had actually had a goal to have a home paid off, right? And we, we've always had that goal is to have a home that's completely paid off, to have investment properties, um, we always bought our cars at like auction. So even though I drove a really nice car, I never bought it outright from the, from the, you know, it wasn't brand new from that way. Like we found ways to really kind of invest our money in different ways. But again, like we want to grow this multi-million dollar business. And at the same time, we like a lot of freedom of being debt free too. So I had made a large payment towards my house. It was like a $90,000 payment and I paid it to principal. And so I called up and the very first thing I did was ask, can we reverse this principle? And they said, yeah, I said, I'd like to reverse it and make it be just to payment. So of course they like that. They don't want you paying off your house. So they were able to take that 90,000, reverse it to payments. And we were able to float and have a ability to not pay on our house that we had. Um, we were able to actually create some income for ourselves. So that's like number one thing we did is we were like, how do we figure out now? We don't have any money and we need to figure out how to find resources. We need to figure out how to find money. We had to find money to like defend ourselves. We had to kind of look at like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to move? So we decided to move out of our home. Uh, I had my baby my third Sloney, she, my third little baby Sloney, love her to death. And two years later, or two days later, we moved. We moved to Salt Lake, we pack up, and we go to where we have a support system. And our support system is even bigger now because now it includes not only the friends that we were in the business with, they also moved in the same area, but now included my entire family, my husband's entire family. You lived where we were, right? So we had mm -hmm. even more friends and we picked up and we packed up our house and we moved to uh, Utah. So to why was over. that support system so important in that time of your life? Why did you need that extra support system? Because I think when you go through something so big, there were so many people that had opinions on you that like, oh, you're a terrible person. Um, you must have really been doing something wrong. You must have really been scamming people. You weren't really probably delivering, which none of was true. Um, and you just like, you're like, where do I go where there's people that actually no matter what happened are, are you're in your corner, right? The people who believe in you, the people who love you, it's, it's really important. Um, I think 
also so that you don't get in the depths of like depression or despair or, or believing it, right. Yeah. Like, or having to defend yourself all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like you said, coming back to that safe space where people love you and have your back and you can really, you have to go through that process too, of like healing mm-hmm. from that traumatic event that happened. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about that too, is everybody was willing to come in with their gifts and what they did really well. So what I watched was a lot of people come together and help support us in the way that they could. So certain family members were like, Hey, we have the money to give you, you know, we need a $15,000 just to retain our attorney. And he said, we, you know, my husband's family just were like, Hey, all of us boys are going to give this to you. We don't need it back. Um, my sister came and completely moved me and she's like a ninja in moving people. Um, I keep telling her, please start a business because people really need this skill set of being able to actually move also in the fact that I was in trauma. Right. And that it's hard to kind of focus and put things together and leave your dream home that you worked so hard to and get. just had a baby two days yeah. before. Totally. Yeah. And she came right before that. So she came during my nesting phase and she came and we were packing together and then, you know, family that came and moved us. And then what ended up happening is I got to our new place and they had unpacked my entire house. Like my sister had gone even to that, like all my furniture was set up, all my clothes were in my closet. So it was like my best friend drove me from Vegas. So everybody came in and did their part. And I think that's really important when you're talking to your clients about coaching or when maybe even they're hiring, right. Is, is we hire the people with the strategic skills that, that come alongside of ours, that help us to grow in our business. Um, that is kind of like what I saw during that time and to not expect people to do things that really, you know, weren't their, their best strength to give at the time. And I've learned a lot about that is qualifying people, especially not being willing to invest. You'll have a lot of clients that will qualify friends and family to be certain things in their life. And they don't go invest in what they need. Yes. That I'm sure you deal with that a lot in coaching. I've dealt with that. In Absolutely. Coaching. And I learned just through that time frame is like, Oh, you cannot ask people for help that they just don't know how to give. Absolutely. And you have got to ask people for help. Not in that situation, but now in life and business is like, you have to be willing this is probably a good transition is starting over. You have to be willing to figure out if you need a coach that you have to invest in, that you go find the money, even when you're in this type of situation that we, we were in, because right. we had to start over now. Yes. Right. We had to figure out where to find resources again, not only to live, but to now start over in business. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, as you think about yourself as well, that's part of it as well as as you go to support other people, don't go into the people pleasing of like trying to figure it out, like, and do all the things for all the people. It's like, here's what I'm willing to give and support and have that, have that faith that they can figure it out a different way. Mm-hmm. But like you mentioned, it really is looking for those specific things and then asking yourself, am I willing to invest in that type of coach or that type of help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even when you're in, even when you have zero money. And again, I probably haven't painted the picture of the depths that we were in as deep just because I'm probably, well, I know I'm so far past it in certain senses, like disconnected to it, but it's still a part of who I am and it's why it drives me. Um, But we, we, we literally had like I remember we had one credit card we found as like a company together and we like had a credit card and we're like, Hey, we're all got to go to Costco and like, you know, get some things that we need. And I just remember walking around Costco. I'd already, I already had done this. I already had filled my fridge. I was in this time frame of like, my fridge was never, you know, not full. I, I was working on like back stock and really having like good supply in my home. Um, and putting some money away. I, we, I did have some money at home in a, in a safe, Um, but I remember walking around Costco and just feeling this overwhelming, like I had this card, I had a resource, but I was like, I don't know what to do with this resource. Hindsight. I'm like, dang girl, you should have got this. Like I didn't even buy diapers. I was having a baby and I'm like, you should have just taken all of that resource and bought, you know, two years of life diapers. So even in that scenario, the emotional part of it, I 
the depth of that is I felt like I deserved that. I was like, I, and I was buying into the belief that somebody else thought about me that was, I must be a bad person. If this happened to me, I must be a really bad person. And so in that time, I, even though I had so much help around me, I had bought in a little bit before the change and before I was, you know, thriving again, and in Utah and like, you know, starting over, I had bought into the, I am a bad person. I must have deserved that. And that ran with me for a little while, even after the move. And how do you, how do you operate when you're in that space of believing that you're a bad person? And I that eat you deserve- a lot of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call that buffering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Using something. Yeah. I, I. I remember sleeping a lot and I remember the first two weeks of, and again, you would do that probably naturally if you have a new baby, but I just remember sleeping a lot. People were bringing over food, um, you know, where we had moved and I hadn't met anybody yet. And I just then actually went into like cleaning the house and kind of making, you know, making my house. And, um, luckily for me, I, the person who knocked on my door two weeks later, she became one of my first mentors and she became my first mentor. And now, which would be a shift for me in expanding some of my intuitive gifts. And I really look at that transition and that change of Vegas as the greatest blessing that could have happened to me because it was the stepping stone and the catapult for me literally being able to come into intuitive gifts and like digging deep into who I am and overcoming limitations of, uh, all the things that people think about you, limitations of like childhood limitations of school, the way that I chose to go to school limitations in the way that I learned, like all these things came up for me, um, in that process for me to challenge me to take a look at and go, well, were those things wrong or were those just really who you are? And you're just really this incredible person. I know that sounds interesting to correlate such a big transition to all of your childhood trauma, but you do because it gets you really deep to go, well, where well, am I at now? You're broken down to like the core, right? Like yeah. that's part of it is when we go through really traumatic times like that, mm-hmm. it really does go back to like the base of like, who am I and mm-hmm. w- why am I here? Essentially hundred percent. That was the biggest key. Who am I? Why am I here? And getting broken down to that point, you then start to make decisions from there. And so every decision at that point, especially meeting my friend who knocked on my door was who am I and what am I supposed to be doing in the world? Because clearly that we weren't supposed to be doing that. So what am I supposed to be doing? So how did you make that transition? Like you mentioned, so you guys all moved, mm-hmm. had a new baby Okay. So what do the next several months look like for you? So Steve's my husband's super talented. I'm like, I always, and I'm, I'm always amazed when, when, when I just watch him, I watch how he is with people. I watch the relationships he has with people. He just went after it. He's like, okay, we're going to start a new business. Him and one of the business partners started a new business together. And, and around that time, again, we weren't taking anything from that company because we had, um, shifted the, um, payment on that mortgage. And then we rented our house out for a while. So we had a renter in there. So we had some things to float, right? So they're starting a new business. I had started dabbling in the network marketing space and I decided to do network marketing inside of doTERRA with a friend. And I was just being a loyal friend. I was like, I'm just gonna be loyal. I have a friend. She wants to do this. I really wasn't like super bought in at the time. And so we started doing um, this doTERRA network marketing business. And I think for me, it gave me just the ability to have something I was involved in outside of myself because it required me to help other people. It's very focused around health and wellness, which I've always been very passionate about. And so it also put me in the energy of, oh, I need, I'm outside of myself now. Like now I can look at this business model and this product and I could see, oh, this, this is helping people. And I could focus my time there. So I started slowly building, um, that business while my husband also was building his business. And, um, I had a few people come in at that time that my old actual, one of the girls I worked with at Bellagio, she contacted me cause she needed some, you know, oils for her new company. And then I ended up recruiting her and we just kind of took off in this space. And at the same time, the woman that knocked on my door, her name is Stacy Sadler. She became my first mentor and she taught me about auras and she taught, taught me about energy work and specifically auras, 
are linked to very specific gifts that you possess and that you operate with out into the world through those gifts. Like your aura is a color that's around you. And with that color that's around you, that light that you have, there are specific gifts, kind of like people do strength finders. Right. And I learned that I was the uh, violet yellow and I went through her mentorship. So here I'm throwing my time into my kids, this business that I'm doing with girlfriends and we're all figuring it out. And like, and then I'm also doing really deep personal development on who I actually am, how I operate in the world, what my gifts are. And I'm combining all of this together and growing a business and learning who I am again, mm-hmm. right? And learning my purpose, right? Because that's really at the the cause of the trauma was feeling like, who am I? Well, and I love that you put them all together because I think that when we talk about building a business, it can get so business oriented. Mm -hmm. So if you took out that personal development part of your journey, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't be where you are today. Mm -mm. You would, like we mentioned, like building a business was amazing, still thriving and doing amazing, but it's making sure that you're continuing to do your own personal growth, your own personal development because that really has now led you to not only your network marketing business, but a thriving coaching practice as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the one thing I do really want to say is, is a lot of the times when I look at business, so now we're coming into another principle that's really important and that you and I coach a lot on it's the identity, right? Is taking on an identity and a lot of the time. So what did happen was I built an incredible network marketing business for 10 years, right? I've been with the company longer. It's been about 10 years is really building the business. And I grow to like almost the top, right? It's a blue diamond. They're really like, this is important, right? This, mm-hmm. I'm thinking this is where you want to go because it's what I'm told. Like, this is the top you want to go here, but I'm building this business and I'm still building it out of an identity of feeling like I need to prove myself again, who am I? And some of that is in shadow, right? Because I'm trying to overcome and compensate of the loss and the failure and the setback and the identity that I'm a terrible person because that was still kind of hanging around. And I'm trying to build this new business. And inside of that business, there were a lot of misaligned decisions that I made with people Maybe times I would travel, maybe times I would push too much in that business. And I created that business the first couple of years really out of an identity in shadow and limitation. And a lot of that trauma that not only happened through the setback, but then as a child was coming up. Right. And as things that I. So how were you able to see that there was a misalignment there and that maybe it was being built from. The shadow, Not, right? That shadow space. Yeah. It, it's really great because they do say when you get into a network marketing business, it's really a personal development business. Absolutely. And it totally is, but any business is a personal development business. So during that time I was mentoring with uh, Stacy Sadler and inside of her principles in her aura mentorship, each aura learns a specific way. And she had this task for us to do. And it was specifically to um, read certain books on the ways to like modalities or techniques that would help you to maybe overcome something or become more of something. And I'm not a really awesome reader. I'm kinesthetic. So I want to work and I work with people where I'm like, show me, right? So show me how to do that. So what I did instead of reading the books was I, I invested in additional mentors. And what I did was I was learning that there were certain skills that I felt Um, and shadows that were coming up for me. And I, especially sales sales was super difficult for me. So I hired my next coach and that way they could show me how to actually overcome in my doTERRA business, the shadow of being able to sell. And so I've always been someone who's constantly working with someone and having them show me the skill. And that's a really a big key. So during that time frame, I'm doing that. Also, I'm using the product. And again, this is part of my path now 
is now where I coach now and kind of fast forward and we'll talk a little bit about that is not only do I build that network marketing business, but that product in particular for me um, is an essential oil and they have an ability to help you overcome physical and emotional limitations in the body. And that is actually what I discovered is my greatest gift naturally, whether I'm using that tool or not is I have an ability to intuitively find the deep limitations that are happening and happening for you inside of your business or inside of your health, find those limitations through your body and release those. And so everything just kind of kept growing for me and expanding for me in the intuitive gifts and intuitive and all of that going back to is being willing to build a business and get out there, work with people, look at things I needed to discover about myself and then going and finding the resources or the coaches that would help me. And then that all translated into me having a deeper understanding of my gifts and then creating this new business. And uh, throughout all of that, then, like you said, being able to create a business that then has really supported hundreds of people Mm -hmm. as they've come to you for work. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, it's like the experience, the education, the history that you have in natural wellness Mm -hmm. has all built up to what you have now. So tell me a little bit about why, why the energy work, why coaching around this particular space is so important. Well, everything obviously first starts as energy, right? We, we, you know, you get into physics and I like to kind of tell people, you know, anyone who drives a Tesla, Carrie drives a Tesla, we know this, but it's like the feature. And this is kind of just a fun way to kind of help people visualize this, visualize this really quick is I remember my friend saying, I don't even have to take my car in. Somebody just dials in to the diagnostics and the software and they just do, they're like, oh, here's all the things wrong with your car. And then we're going to reset it. And they go in and they reset and they're able to fix it all on their end. They're able to tap into the car through the software and they're able to diagnose all the areas that are needing you know, to be fixed. Oh, this needs an upgrade. This needs an upgrade. And then they're they're able to do that without actually you even coming into the, you know, service place with a car dealership, right? You don't even have to bring it in. That's actually what I do. And so I like to liken my work to Tesla. If you're fascinated with Tesla and you drive a Tesla and you have a really hard time understanding energy work and what I do, I'm just going to say, you know, take it back to this. You you dial into Tracy. She taps in. (laughs) Same thing. It is. It is the same thing though, right? Like you're very great at diagnosing from that space of energy Mm -hmm. and then being able to not only help release through what you do, but then finding the products or things to support you afterwards. There's two things. And what, uh, this goes back to the identity and I I hope I'm going to like, make sure I have my notes right here. So I, cause you know, the energy part, it's, it's actually identity and it, it's, Identity is one, making decisions from the identity that you want to create. So again, in coaching, when you have people come to you and they're like, yeah, I want to be six figures in your network marketing business. Yeah, I want to be a diamond. I dealt with that a lot, right? Yeah, I want to be a diamond. And I would paint a picture a lot of the times. This is where, this is actually where I'd say I was in shadow a little bit is because I would a lot of times paint a picture of the buy-in to me what I can offer to work with you and the things I can do for you and what I can give that actually was misusing not only my resources, but misusing my energy because I would think that I would need to sell someone on the buy-in of me. Mm -hmm. So I was attaching my identity and my self-worth to whether or not that person was successful because I helped them. That's actually like the opposite of what we should be doing because nothing truly is about you in business. You as the coach, it is about that person, right? So our job as coaches is to help people to get into integrity in the identity of why they are choosing to do a certain business and also helping them to detach from, right? The business, so to speak, right? You are you and you are this incredible person and you have an incredible amount of energy to give. And so you decide where you're passionate, where your values are. So one of them is growing a six figure coaching business or growing in the network marketing space. So you give your now energy to that, but we need to be careful of attaching our identity to that because then we'd be in shadow like, Oh, if it doesn't work out, what does it say by me? 
right? Mm -hmm. And then you as a a person, as an energy, you want to have children and you want your children to thrive. So you give energy out to them. But where we can sometimes misuse that energy is we attach whether we're a great mother to whether our kids are successful or are thriving. So this happens a lot. And then the second thing is, then we've got again, this because it's a big area I work with is is not only the financial, but again, the physical wellness is how we look or our image, which is really hard nowadays, but our identity and image is if we look a certain way or we present ourselves a certain way, and then we go out and we try to bring in resources for our business or try to attract in partnerships from that space of our image, which what, what I was basically doing is we misuse the energy and the image and then we end up right draining ourselves and we we'll bring in the wrong resources. So when people are going after goals and we're talking about energy, it's not only bringing in, you know, putting your energy out there to accomplish the goal, but then it comes right back to the alignment that we started talking about mm-hmm. of like you can bring things in, but is it in alignment with what you're wanting to do and the way that you want to do it? Yeah. Because I watch some people um achieve goals and they are like exhausted from it. They actually don't want the goal anymore because of that misalignment of how they actually achieve that goal. Right, and that's actually the one, that's moral integrity, right? Because you're like, okay, the moral integrity is you have certain values that are really important to you, and then you make a decision out of alignment of those values. So let's bring that in perspective. Um, I remember one of the business partners that I worked with, I mean, they just did not want to be gone at night. Right. They did not want to be gone at night. They did not want. I mean, it was very like there was a lot of resentment built up of being gone and having to do a workshop every Thursday night. And that's 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 like a lifeblood of any business is showing up, especially ours is education, Mm -hmm. Um, showing up, educating. That's just it. And I, I never looked at that as I was like, why? I mean, I'm leaving my kids. Right. I'm leaving my kids. You you don't have kids yet. Right. Like it wasn't a negative thing, but it was just more of like like. Why is this such a big deal? It was out of alignment for that person's values, right? And it's because they had a certain value around having um, time with their significant other and when they had that time because their significant other worked during the day. So they didn't want to be gone at night. They actually wanted to work during the day. So this is where it became out of alignment for them. But a lot of the times, because we didn't understand that and we weren't able at the time, I wasn't really focused on values with people as part of their business. Still, I was still like trying to help people grow. I'm like, well, this is just what we do, right? We teach workshops, we get out. This is how you do the business and being in alignment in, in like moral alignment is we can do a business anyway. There's, there's so many ways to do a business and there is a moral alignment for you of how it's going to work best for you. So when you make a decision to grow your business and there's a value that you're now sacrificing, this now becomes resentment in your business. And what ends up happening is you continue to make those decisions and they get layered. And all of a sudden you have resentment, you have anger, you have completely, you're burnt out. We call this functional burnout. Yes. Right. We're using our energy completely wrong. Right. And so, or we're taking on now, now, especially in this scenario, I was taking on, I was like, well, then I'll show up even more and I'll do the workshops even more. So I was taking on the responsibility of that, responsibility for them in their business instead of saying how can we get this back in moral alignment right how can we help you with this value how can we see and that's actually really important when you're working with someone in their business they have values that they bring to the table that as you're coaching them you're going back and you're checking in with them each week as they're making decisions is this in alignment with your values are you making a decision and it might just need a simple tweak is like okay, I can do this for three months because this would be really important to use my energy here. But in three months, it then will shift to look like this. So in the last couple minutes here, I want you to talk about, you said those small shifts. Mm -hmm. How can people check in to see if it's in alignment with them? What are some, some tips that you can give them? So when I coach people, the big thing that we do in, in energy work is what, and going back to what Carrie asked is like, what actually is energy and work? What you do is when I'm working with someone, I'm, I'm tapping into their subconscious mind and I'm asking very specific, direct questions based off of their goal. Right? So 
what, and we're, what we're actually doing in that session even too is energetically, is I'm finding the limitations that are bumping up against those values. So in my work, be, because I'm kind of going through and I'm, I'm accessing this filing system, right? I might find things like age five or age six or those kinds of things. So my technique is very specific, right? And, and the way that I do it through emotion code and body code. When I'm teaching someone else, which is what I really love to do is do the exact same thing. And you're just going to ask yourself, right? So you're going to look at this goal that you have and you're going to ask your, and you're going to have your values along the side, right? And you're just going to start asking yourself questions, right? Is this the right move? Should I launch now? And getting into your body, you're going to have a very specific way your body starts to send you a signal. You'll maybe feel it in your stomach area. You might feel it in your throat. But this for me is a great way. It's just asking yes or no questions and then leaning into your body. You're either going to feel expansive or you're going to feel contracted. And this is the work that you and I did together is you not only would do, like you said, like the work for me, but then you were teaching me how to do it, Mm -hmm. which was so incredible because then, you know, now I can do it for myself, like you mentioned and go down and, and really tap into my own goals and make sure that it's in alignment. So, um, I could talk to you for about five hours. (laughs) And here's the funny thing is we're probably going to sit by the pool and continue continue this conversation. (laughs) So y'all can just come to the pool, but, um, I want everyone to know how to work with you because I really think that working with you has been probably one of my best investments before my business and for myself. So tell everyone, how can we find you and what does it look like to work with you? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. That's where you can find me. Um, and that's just at the moxie code right? So it's at moxycode.com, whatever. And I'm not always great with this social media, like here's where you find everything. Um, but I actually, when you're working with me, I work in a one-on-one setting. So depending on if you want to work on a health goal, right? If you've got something physically going on in your body, um, then we, we have the opportunity of working one-on-one that looks like six weeks or three months, right? Just depending on that, um, in that private one-on-one container. If you have a business goal that you want to work on, if you're looking at expanding your business, sometimes you're taking a shift in your business. Um, that's also in a one-on-one container. We, we work together for three months and I'm pretty big on, um, as we work together, um, it's really important to me that we're in alignment, right? So a lot of the times people want over like specifics, how long do I work with this and that we're going to come together. The first way is like, we're going to go through a discovery call. And at that point, we're going to find out what is that match for you? You may need me for six weeks. You may need me for three months, but it is all done in a private one-on-one container. And it's all based around again, what goal you have you're working on. And um, we're going to make sure we get you in that alignment for that goal. Awesome. Yeah. Well, love you, girl. Love you too. Let's get to the pool. (laughs) Let's go. go. (laughs) Thanks for listening to this podcast episode. If you're ready to get in the driver's seat of your own life, you can come and follow me at drive your thoughts coaching on Instagram, or come and see more ways to work with me at drive your thoughts.com. Yeah. Whether ready or not, life's coming hard. No breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop if you feel a bit out of control and out the box. Here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Kerry Marshall on the clock. Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. I am Kerry Marshall. That was weird. Coaching. Yeah. Coaching. 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 <laughs> this is just all gonna be bloopers. <laughs> We've never made bloopers, but this one will definitely have some.